As we go to air, Cruz Azul and Feyenoord are reportedly putting the final touches on a transfer for 21-year-old Mexican international striker Santiago Jimenez. ESPN reporting Feyenoord going to pay 4 million euros for 50% of the players' rights. Cruz Azul will keep the other half. Jimenez is leaving red hot. He had two goals against Puebla on Saturday and asked about a potential move after the game. Here's what he had to say. Pues la verdad es que hay muchas circunstancias en juego. El jugador eh, no solo piensa lo futbolístico, sino también lo familiar. Es un poco riesgoso salir a Europa. Eh, la verdad es que así lo tomo, pero me gusta tomar los riesgos porque sé que voy eh, con Dios y Dios tomará la, la mejor, el mejor camino para mí. Sí, obviamente en mí este, la verdad es que yo considero primeramente la fe. Y mi fe me dice que hay que tomar riesgos, que hay que luchar por tus sueños y yo creo que Es lo que lo que quiero hoy, eh, sinceramente, como tú dices, es un riesgo por el mundial, porque puede ser que vaya a Europa y no juegue, pero pero de eso se trata el fútbol, de esto se trata el cumplir los sueños, objetivos y, y bueno, vamos a, como dijo Johan, a lanzarle una moneda al aire. Joining us next on Football Americas to discuss the potential move for Santiago Jiménez and some other moves around Mexican soccer, Mauricio Pedrosa, who was playing weatherman in Green Bay this past weekend for Bayern, <laughs> Munich, and Manchester City. Bro, bravo, huh? That was some of the best TV work I have seen in years. You and Barack, unbelievable. Thank you, dude. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Shout out to my guy, Ale Moreno, as well. Uh, he knows he's my dude, so appreciate the love. All right, so let's get into uh, Santiago Jimenez. Mao, uh, do you think Dutch football, and specifically Feyenoord, is the correct landing spot for this prospect who we've been talking about making the move to Europe for quite some time now. It is the perfect move to the point in which I'm now just starting to picking the spot of my body where I'm going to have to put the Bebote tattoo <laughs> after the World Cup to pay off my bet because it looks like the guy is on fire. And I understand why he might be concerned in terms of timing, the timing of mm-hmm. the move mm-hmm. right when he's just picking it up, absolutely en fuego with Cruz Azul. But I think this just speaks volumes about how well he's being managed. I'm going to give props to Cruz Azul as well for making this Mm -hmm. happen. But they're seeing the big picture. The big picture is, I know everyone wants to play in this next World Cup. And a lot of players are making decisions just to comply with what Tata Martino is asking from players, right? Get minutes, play, be on the field. But Santiago Jimenez is seeing the big picture in terms, Mm. right now what I need is to still develop my skills, still find my right ways, the right path for my career. And look, Sebi, the experience tells us that when a player like him, 20, 21, 22 years old, when he can make the jump and play in Europe starting Mm. In the Dutch league, in a team like Feyenoord, it's been proven to be the right move. So I celebrate him. I celebrate Cruz Azul for seeing the big picture and making this happen right now. Regardless, mm. if this means that maybe he will have to fight for minutes, as a consequence, maybe he won't have those minutes that Tata Martino is asking for him. To your point about Cruz Azul, Leon Lecanda reporting that they didn't A, want to sell him or B, need to sell him. And in the past, we've seen Mexican clubs hold on to players so long they lose their value to Europe. Good to see one Mexican club at least doing it different uh, in this situation. I see a lot of positives to this. I always think of any time you see a, a player from this region go to, to the Dutch league, I always think of Josie Altidore, who played Premier League, La Liga, he played in Turkey, played in MLS. Nowhere did he find more goals than in the Dutch league. I think the point about Dennis Teclose being involved here is very good too. This is yes. not, to, to borrow an example, this is not Ricardo Pepe getting hot, coming out of nowhere, becoming the US number nine starting striker. And then all of a sudden Augsburg comes in and tries to outbid Bayern Munich and everybody else who wants him. Dennis Teclose has known about this player for a very long time. So that, that makes me feel good that this is not some spur of the moment decision from Feyenoord, it's good to hear him acknowledge the risk. Hey, I'm leaving a spot where I know I'm going to get playing time in a World Cup year where I know I'm scoring. Uh, but as if you say, if he's if he's up for it, um, why not? It sounds like a good move for all parties uh, involved. That's the Santiago. Go ahead, Mal. Go ahead quickly, quickly. I just want to say something real quick. He's actually going to land in a soft spot because Feyenoord, they just, ha- uh, they, they just signed Danilo, a player from Ajax, 
but they haven't really scored uh, during preseason. They really have struggled finding their number nine. So I guess that he mm. would get the minutes right away. Here's a look at uh, some other recent transfers from Liga Mekis to the Eredivisie. I mean, there's quite a few players who have made that jump and then found success there. And in the case of a Chucky Lozano uh, or a Tecatito Corona, guys who have moved on to, to bigger and better things. So that's a Jimenez perspective. Now let's turn it now to the national team, because as we know, the number nine is a big position for the Mexican national team heading into the World Cup. And what's interesting here is you would think automatically great move for the national team. But as soon as this report dropped, we heard some conflicting reports about what Tata Martino was saying. First, that he wanted Santiago Jimenez to stay at Cruz Azul. His proceso wasn't finished. And then later on, we heard that, no, Tata Martino was, was good with the move. So overall, if we focus it specifically to 2022, and I think not 2026, uh, is this, how, how important is this? What's the impact you think it'll have on the Mexican national team? I mean, I mean, at this, I mean we've come to a point in which I honestly just want Tata Martino to be quiet. Don't say, stop talking. Come back to Mexico, watch Liga MX games, and be quiet. Because there's nothing that he has said in the mm. recent past that has made any sense whatsoever. And the fact that there's contradicting reports, I think it's just it just paints a clear picture of where Tata Martino's head is at right now. This is a great move, and we have to think big picture. If we're still just thinking, what's going to happen for Mexico's number nine at the World Cup 2022? And then mm. we're trying to make that the main reason for Santiago Jimenez to make a choice. Do I leave or do I stay? That's the wrong view. That's the wrong way to see it. I think it is actually a great move because he's going to go to a more competitive league. He's going to have some minutes. He's going to have better competition around him. It's only going to make him a better player. And that's exactly what you want for the Mexican national team. Have mm. better players. Is, is, is he going to start in November in Qatar? Maybe not, but this is the future. Santiago Jimenez is the future of the position. And it's fantastic news for the Mexican national team mm. that he gets to lead this early in his career. Look, if he does start, we know you're getting some ink. We know you're getting that tattoo. It's a huge impact for the national team program for 2026. I think for 2022 as well, Mal, because we know this. If there's, a, if there's a Mexican player scoring in Europe, it doesn't matter where, the pressure on Tata Martino yeah. is going to be intense. And if Raul Jimenez still isn't scoring and Funes Mori isn't getting the job done, a guy scoring in Europe, that's a, that's a hell of an ace to play if you're Santiago Jimenez trying to break in, not to the team, uh, but to the starting lineup at the World Cup. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.